Now, moving on to some troubling news out of Japan, where there are more signs now that the Fukushima nuclear crisis is still ongoing. Sludge samples taken from Tokyo Bay show that radioactive cesium contamination has increased in some areas by 13 times since measures were taken last August. Health officials claim the radiation levels pose no immediate risk to the population, but could get a lot worse as contaminated fish filled with radioactive isotopes travel up the food chain into the world's restaurants and dinner tables. Meanwhile, in the United States, the Associated Press is reporting that nuclear regulators have quietly watered down U.S. planning for nuclear emergencies. Despite nuclear plants all around the nation aging beyond their recommended operational lives, nuclear regulators have reduced evacuation zones around them, required fewer exercises for accidents, and relaxed training for emergency officials. In other words, we're less prepared today to deal with a nuclear disaster than we were before Fukushima happened. For an update on Japan and the latest on nuclear troubles here in the United States, Paul Gunter joins me, the director of the Reactor Oversight Project at Beyond Nuclear. Paul, welcome. Hey, thank you, Tom. So uh, what is the state of affairs, first of all, at Fukushima? Well, obviously, the big concerns right now are focused on any event that could start a cascade of what has been tallied as 85 times this, the levels of cesium-137 that were released from Chernobyl. Uh, any number of events, I think right now a lot of focus is on another earthquake that could start a, uh, a cascade beginning with the uh, reactor building unit four uh, falling over, a, a nuclear fuel fire involving 136 metric tons of nuclear waste, and uh, it's in the roof of number it's four. On, it's up on the roof of uh, number four. But, you know, there are um, these other five units that would then become too contaminated to manage. And then there's a common nuclear waste pool to all six units uh, that's right there next to unit four. And uh, this is where the, the major inventory of radioactive waste is right now. And if this, uh, if this accident were to cascade, then it would mean um, what's been referenced as a civilization ending uh, event for Japan. Civilization ending? That's what the. Uh, like sterilize the country? The, the, the former ambassador uh, from Japan to Switzerland uh, has basically put out this warning that an international effort must now be mounted, uh, bringing in the United Nations uh, to, to basically prevent this domino from falling that could begin with Unit 4 and the next earthquake. Even if they had the resources of every other nation on Earth and whatever tools they may have to deal with nuclear disasters, um, how do they do that? I mean, you've got Units 1 and 2 that are blowing out so much radiation right now, people can't walk in those areas. They, they, uh, what, what technology is there? That, what, what, what do they have to do? I think that we are, um, you know, basically groping in the dark. Uh, with nobody this. knows. Nobody really knows at this point. But what clearly has been demonstrated is the, the most relevant and perhaps the only relevant protection is prevention. And that means that we have to end nuclear power. Yeah, well, no doubt about that. Um, and speaking of Reactor 4, Reactor 4 is a design that came out of the United States. General Electric put it together. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong on this. And we've got a bunch of those here in the United States. How are they doing? Well, right now, uh, the, the Fukushima Daiichi accident basically put a lot of focus on the General Electric Mark I boiling water reactor. Uh, we've known since 1972 that these things were time bombs. They were ready to, you know, basically fail. And, and uh, so... Um, is this in, the one that almost took out Detroit? Is this, that uh, yeah, Detroit Fermi. Uh, well, that was actually Fermi 1, uh -huh. which was uh, not a Mark 1, but a, a, a prototype breeder reactor. Uh -huh. But uh, there is a, a Fermi 2, a Mark 1 there, just outside of Detroit. But basically now the focus is on all these uh, GE Mark 1, and they've now folded in the Mark 2 uh, reactors because they have this vulnerable containment, which now has been demonstrated at Fukushima with a 100% failure rate when faced with a severe accident. All six, one. Well, the first, the, the three operational reactors, units one, two, and three, they failed under the severe accident condition. And they generated this hydrogen gas, which then was vented into unit four and exploded. And uh, fortunately, five and six were not involved yet. 
But again, we're concerned, and in fact, right now, the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission and the U.S. nuclear industry and the public interest community are now all engaged in this, um, you know, exactly how do you deal with a demonstrated failure. We've got 23 of these reactors here in the United States and eight of these Mark IIs. So that's, you know, that's 31 reactors that are vulnerable to failure. Just, just very quickly, we're, we're pretty much out of time here, but um, has the Japanese government officially, formally asked for help from the international community? No. Do you expect them to? I think that we have to mount a, uh, clearly there's a petition effort. You can go to our website. Uh, you can basically, you know, right now get, get your p communities uh, to begin this political move to uh, basically draw attention to the international effort that now has to be mounted. Amazing. Paul, thank yeah, you so no much. Yeah, no nukes. Yeah, amen. Keep up the great work. Paul Gunter. Uh, this uh, nuclear news coming from Japan and here at home should trouble us all and remind us that the only safe type of nuclear power is no nuclear power.